Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening to all. My name is Paulo Marengo Trindade Jr. I'm a master's student at the pro postgraduate program in technological and environment chemistry at the Federal University of Rio Grande. And I'm here to present the work Synthesis and Characterization of Polymeric Films from Recycler Expanded Polystyrene EPS and their compo composites with lignin from pine cones, developed by me and the graduate student Carolyn Oliveira in the Laboratory of Applied Physical Chemistry and Technology, guided and co-orientated by professors Paulo Henrique Beck and Renato Pereira de Mello. For better understanding, the presentation is divided into introduction, objectives, methodology, results and discussion, and conclusion. Since the beginning of its existence, the Earth has always been under the influence of solar radiation, which is the largest source of energy on the planet and is responsible for the survival of the planet's fauna and flora. Its incident radiation, known as white light, can be considered a mixture of three main radiation, which can be classified according to their respective wavelengths. These comprise vibration infrared energy, visible light energy, and UV light energy, which is subdivided into three types of radiation. UVA, UVB, and UVC. All through this radiation is essential for certain reactions such as photosynthesis. Prolonged exposure to it can result in health damage such as allergies, irritations, burns, and even cancer. Disease that are not limited to damage only the skin but also the eyes. Taking into account what has been commented so far, it is pleasurable to say that it becomes pertinent to the scientific community to develop new materials of substance that are capable of absorbing or blocking such radiation. Therefore, the present work proposes the development of materials with the presence of chromophoric groups. This can be defined as any group of unsaturated bounds positioned in a conjugated manner, as you can see in the following example, such as acrolein, carotene, and lignin. Another issue that plagues contemporary society can be said to be the accumulation of industrial waste, which is a major contributor to problems involving the environment. This again cause the society community to mobilize, this time in search of ways to reuse such waste for production of new materials. Among the residues of interest, expanded polystyrene EPS is pronounced, which has great availability due to its wide use as packaging of electronics and appliance. Besides, have interesting uh, properties such as high resistance to tractions as well as a strong acidic and basic solution. Still within the question of accumulated residues, the timber industries are mentioned, which often use pinus iliot wood, a species of trees, also known as pines for furniture production and resin extraction. This is because they are plants of the type gymnosperms. They are not able to produce uh, edible fruits, only conical structures without nutritional value, known as pine cones, that are often improperly discarded or used in burning. Knowing that pine cones are made up of cellulose, lignin, and hemicellulose, and are also found in abundance, they can be considered a promising source 
in the extraction of lignin, which are macromolecules whose main function in plants is to strengthen the cell wall, have a natural rigidity, and are made up of an amorphous network of aromatic rings, which qualifies them as a great source of chromophorous groups. Another characteristic of lignin is that it is strongly linked to the cell wall of vegetables, which make it difficult to extract and tends to result in product modifications at the end of this process. In view of the difficulties, as well as the availability of the materials available to combat them, the present work aimed to extract lignin from pine cones and incorporated it in EPS matrices for the production of polymeric films. In addition to determining the influence of the polyethylene glycoplasticizing agent PEG400, as well as UV radiation, in order to promote and analyze change in its physical and chemical properties by spectroscopy, thermal, morphological, and mechanical parameters. The methodology for the production of the composites proceeds from the collection of biomass in the compounds of the Federal University of Rio Grande, followed by a pre-treatment of these to remove dirty and essential oils that are not part of the cell wall of the pine cones, followed by the extraction of lignin by organosol method and production of composites in the form of films using the method known as solution casting. As a final product, six samples were obtained, one and two, of which are pure EPS films, three and four EPS with 5% lignin, five and six EPS with 5% lignin and PEG 400 plasticizer. Also, Samples 1, 3, and 5 were not submitted to photochemical uh, treatment, while samples 2, 4, and 6 were exposed for 6 minutes to UV radiation. Regarding the organosol extraction method, after pre-treatment of the biomass, the crushed pine cones were placed under reflux system for 24 hours, using acetone as an extraction solvent in an acid min. The solubilized lignin was separated from the solid residue and its solvent was evaporated. As a final product, lignin was obtained in powder form. For the production of the composites, the precursors of the films were solubilized under magnetic stirring until their complete homogenization in the form of a gel. Then it was poured under specific mold plates, where its solvent was evaporated at room temperature on a properly leveled platform. In order to determine spectroscopy parameters, infrared spectroscopy FTIR and UV radiation absorption spectroscopy techniques were used. Thermodynamic parameters were determined by thermogravimetric analysis, known as TGA. The morphology was observed by scanning electron microscopy, and the mechanical parameters were analyzed by stress tests. This slide shows the spectra obtained from the FTIR analysis of the film's precursors which are superimposed in order to establish an idea of which bands may or may not be alterated in the matrix, such as the appearance of the lignin hydroxyl band and PEG 400 around 3,500 cm, as well as carbon and oxygen bounds around 1,200 cm, such as widening or narrowing of the bands of splitting or stretching of hydrocarbons. Now observing the overlap of the FTIR spectra of composites. When comparing the spectrum of sample 3 with 
50% lignin with sample 1 of pure EPS, a small hydroxyl band around 3,500 centimeters circled in black appears. In addition to the development of the band close to 1,200 centimeters, which probably corresponds to the units of carbon-carbon, carbon-oxygen, and carbonyl linkages of guaiacil groups of lignin, in addition to a slight displacement of approximately 610 centimeters that can also occur due to the presence of alcoholic groups constituents of lignin. This band shows that there was an interaction between the matrix and the reinforcing agent. Analyzing the spectrum of sample 5, a more prominent unfolding of the band of the hydroxyl in 3500 is circulated in green, as well as the carbon and oxygen connections uh, in approximately 1200 centimeters. In addition to widening the splitting bands of hydrocarbons bounds by approximately 1,500. Such results may indicate that the insertion of polyethylene glycol in the film's compositions causes an increase in the space between the molecules, thus increasing the vibration energy absorption of the composites. Speaking now about the effect of the photochemical treatment in sample 4 in relation to sample 3. This demonstrated greater pronouncement of the hydroxyl band in 3,500 centimeters, as well as the bands coming from groups of the precursors guaiacil of lignin in the fingerprint zone in approximately 1,200 centimeters. In addition, it is also visible that the developments of hydrocarbon linkages become more prominent for sample 4 with respect to sample 3. This may be an indication that exposure to UV radiation may be causing a change in conformations of the substituting groups of the composites, or even breaking the bounds of certain substituting groups to the main chain thus increasing the vibrational energy absorbed. With respect to polyethylene glycol samples, sample 6 demonstrates an opposite effect to that seen in sample 4 with respect to the hydroxyl band, that is, it has been shown to reduce with the exposure to UV radiation. Perhaps the photochemical treatment promotes interactions between the polyethylene glycol hydroxyls that are located at the end of the chain with other substitutes of the composites. In relation to the other bands, an increase in with this is observed both in relation to the carbon-carbon, carbon-oxygen and carbonyl connections in 1200 centimeters and in the CH2 stretches, which may indicate an increase in vibrational energy in the main chain. Regarding the spectroscopy analysis of UV visible radiation absorption, figure A shows the overlapping of the lignin, pure EPS, and composite spectra, where it can be seen that with regard to the greater absorption band at approximately 260 nanometers. Variation occurs with the insertion of the lignin R and polyethylene glycol in composites 3 and 5. In the region close to 320 nanometers, the composites present a band similar to that seen in lignin which corresponds to the absorption band of non-conjugated phenolic groups. Figure C and D shows the results of photochemical treatment effect. This apparently has no influence with respect of the wavelength range of the composites. What could be said would be the variation in the intensity of absorption, but 
Due to the limitations with respect to gravimetric measurement in the laboratory, as well as the sensitivity of the technique, this could be caused maybe by a variation in concentration in the preparation of the samples for analysis. Regarding the thermodynamic parameters, figure A shows the TGs and DTGs obtained from lignin as well as from pure EPS and composites. In this is evident the increase in the degradation temperature provided by the incorporation of lignin in sample 3 and 5. When comparing these two samples, it can be seen that sample 5 undergoes the initial degradation at lower temperature than sample 3. This is in line with that observed in FTIR, where it was observed widening in the characteristics bands of the composites with the insertion of polyethylene glycol in the films. However, it can still be said that the combined use of polyethylene glycol to the composite does not compromise the optimization of thermodynamic parameters caused by the incorporation of lignin, since Simple 5 still has a main degradation temperature above 400 degrees Celsius, while Simple 1 around 370 degrees Celsius. Regarding the photochemical treatment, this again meets what was observed in the FTIR, since the TGAs showed a slight reduction in the degradation temperature of samples 4 and 6 in comparison to their analogs without exposure to UV radiation. However, this does not compromise the thermodynamic properties of the composite since this phenomenon occurs at initial temperatures of degradation. In the present table, it is possible to observe more closely the values of the phenomena just mentioned, where it can still observe that the residual rate at the end of the analysis increase for the samples with photochemical treatment. This is indicative of the formations of coals resistant to high temperatures. From the micrographs on the present slide, it is possible to observe more closely the effect of the photochemical treatment on the surface of the composites, where in figure A and B, the composites of EPS and lignin are observed with magnifications of 500 and 5000 times, and in the figure C and D, the composites with EPS, lignin, and polyethylene glycol incorporated also with magnifications of 500 and 5000 times. Apparently, exposure to UV light promotes a smoother surface with less rogue interface between reinforcement and matrix, which is indicative of a more homogeneous dispersion through the composites. From what can be seen from the results of rupture stress test, the nature stiffness of lignin actually interferes with the elastic properties of the composites, since when comparing sample 3 and 1, the one with 5% lignin shows less deformation as well as lower breakdown stress. However, this deficiency with regard to the mechanical properties of lignin composites can be rectified with the joint use of the plasticizer PEG 400, since Simple 5 demonstrated properties similar to the pure film. With the regard to the photochemical treatment, it apparently promotes an increase in the elastic models of the materials, which indicated that the 60 minutes exposure to UV radiation promotes a better distribution of energy through the material when it is subjected to stress. Based on the data presented, 
it can be seen that the reuse of combined industrial waste in order to produce new hybrid materials with optimized properties may prove to be a viable way of combating their inappropriate disposal, since from the combination of EPS with lignin, it was possible to produce a thermally more stable composite than its precursors, with an absorption wavelength range wider than that of EPS capable of absorbing within the UVA radiation spectrum. And whose mechanical properties can be balanced with the joint use of PEG-400 without compromising the other characteristics and which can still be optimized by photochemical reactions treatment. Thank you very much, everyone, for your attention and opportunity.